In this video, we're going to talk about probably the most useful of all of the exponential growth models we're going to talk about in this lecture series. Um, from an arithmetic point of view, it is, of course, the most challenging. It's the most complicated. But at the same time, it also uh, is the most useful of all of them. So we should mention that the growth models that we've talked about previously. So uh, the idea previously, we had y equals, you know, some constant e, c times e to like kt. Like, so this, this exponential model we had before, uh, sometimes we use different letters, of course, for these, for these, for the parameters K and C right here, but they're just, there's parameters, right? This is what's often referred to as uninhibited growth. That when you look at the model if, in terms of growth, the growth model will just get bigger, 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 bigger right? And that might seem a little bit ridiculous, right? That, that just continues to grow without bound, right? Now, if you're talking about like radioactive decay, then sure, it's going to decay towards zero. Zero makes sense as some limiting value. Or with like Newton's law of cooling we had before, it cools down towards the surrounding environment's uh, temperature, which also makes sense. So in that regard, you're bounded by this asymptote. But with growth models, you're not really, you're, you're kind of going away from the asymptote. And so what's the limit over here? The idea is it's going to be infinity, right? It just continues to grow, 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 grow. And while this makes a very simple formula to use in comparison to the logistic growth we're going to see in a little bit, it does seem a little unrealistic that we can just continue to go, go, grow, 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 that there eventually might be some type of scarcity of resources of some kind that inhibits the ability for the population to continue to grow without bounds. So, for example, what if our model has built into it some lower bound, like you can't have a population less than zero, but what if it had some upper bound, some like it had two different, you know, um, horizontal asymptotes. What if, for example, our ecosystem has some type of carrying capacity? When I was a kid, I always thought it was that this was called a carrying capacity, right? Carrying capacity. You know, you can only care for this many bunnies, right? That That's not what it was. It's carrying capacity. So what if there's like a limit there? So that, you know, there's some lower bound that our model cannot decay below that, but then there's some upper bound also and so perhaps at the beginning of growth, it looks like exponential growth, right? That when you start getting away from this lower bound, there's like this explosion of growth. Uh, but then as you get close to the maximum population, it kind of tapers off. So it kind of switches from like exponential growth to exponential decay, sort of. Uh, not, not really decay because it's still increasing, but you, you're kind of like exponentially growing away from one asymptote. But then you start to slow down as you get closer to the other asymptote. Um, can we get a function that looks something like this? And this is an example of what we call the logistic growth model for which a function formula would look something like this right here. The amount after a specific time, so A of T, it'll look like C over one plus A E to the negative K T. So this is, it's like combining a rational function with uh, uh, exponential function. That is we compose rational functions and exponentials together. We can, we can make this logistic function, kind of like breeding a Zerg with a Protoss or something like that. We have this hybrid creature that has properties from both exponential and rational functions. All right. And so, of course, the, the, the ratio comes into play mostly to force uh, this, second, uh, this second asymptote to be inside the graph. So let's figure out what the end behavior of this logistic function looks like to kind of motivate why we're using it in the first place. So notice as T approaches negative infinity, uh, what happens to this function? Let's first look at this exponential for a moment. You have that negative case. So this is actually a decay model. And so as you look at this graph, you see something like the following, right? So as T goes towards negative infinity, you're going this way on the graph. This thing is pointing up. This thing, um, as, as T goes to negative infinity, we see that E to the negative KT is going to approach infinity. So our quantity A here is going to look like you have this constant C over 1 plus infinity. That is C over infinity, which when you have a fraction, the bigger the denominator gets, the smaller the ratio gets. So if you take sort of like the biggest possibility ever infinity, this thing is going to become a zero. All right. And so that's suggestive of this asymptote right here that as T goes to negative infinity, the left hand side is going to go to zero. It has this horizontal asymptote there. All right. So let me just kind of summarize that right here, that as T approaches negative infinity, we see that A is going to approach zero, matching up with what we expect. 
But on the other hand, if we send t equal, if we tend send t off towards infinity here, in this situation, we're now asking, well, what happens as we go to the far right of this graph? Uh, in this case, a is going to go towards zero, and we see that on the graph, you're going to have that. Uh, sorry, not a here. The y coordinate of the exponential function is going to go towards zero. But the amount with this logistic model here, this thing is going to look like c over 1 plus 0, which then becomes a c, which then suggests this end behavior right here. This logistic model will range from will range from 0 to c. So in fact, the domain, the domain of this logistic function will be c, excuse me, 0 towards c. It'll range from 0 towards the carrying capacity. Um, it'll be an increasing function. And you do see this explosion of exponential growth near the middle of the graph. And so that's why this model, uh, why this model actually turns out to be the right thing to, uh, this function family is the right one to get um, this type of growth here. Now, what about this coefficient a? In order to get it to behave the way we want it to, um, this a right here is actually going to be c minus a naught over a naught, where a naught we're going to call the initial value, like the initial amount inside of the population. And so I want you to think of this right here as our, as some type of like relative, relative elbow room. What I mean by that is like, if you were to go to like a movie theater, right? If you're the first one there, the whole theater is open. You can go sit anywhere you want, no big deal. But when you get, if you're the second person there, it's like, well, I can sit anywhere, but I don't want to sit right next to that person. That's kind of awkward. I want as much space as I can. So you're going to go to a different spot. And as more and more people come into the system, um, the ability to kind of sit down is hindered. And so your ability to grow will slow down um, the more and more things that come into it. And so if you take C minus the initial population divided by the initial population, this kind of tells you percentage-wise, like how much opportunity is there to grow inside of this ecosystem. So let's do a, let's do a specific example here. Um, suppose a bacteria culture with an initial population of 100,000 bacteria grows logistically at a rate of 8% per hour. So let's see some things we've, let's, let's identify what we know already. The initial population A0 is gonna be 100,000. I'm just gonna say 100K there. And we know that it grows at 8% per hour. So our growth rate K is equal to 0 0.08 per hour. We're gonna be measuring growth with hours here. If the carrying capacity of the Petri dish is 1 million, right? So there's only so much that this Petri dish can grow, uh, can hold before there's not enough room for any more bacteria to grow there, right? So that's going to be a million is our carrying capacity. To make things a little bit easier, I'm going to say it's a thousand, thousand, right? So a thousand K. Find the population sizes after 40 hours and 50 hours. Uh, when will the population reach 0.9 million? And so let's look at this using our logistic model. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to fill in the numbers right here. We have the carrying capacity of a thousand. And now we have to compute this A value. So A by the formula above, take our carrying capacity, which will be a thousand minus our current, which is a hundred. And again, these are all multiplied by a thousand divided by a hundred right here. So we're going to get 900 divided by 100. So we end up with the coefficient of nine. And we should think of this as 9,000, but we'll just multiply whatever final answer we get by a thousand in the end. So our formula is going to look like the amount after a given time will look like 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9 times e to the negative 0.08t, where t is being measured in hours. So if we want to figure out what is the population after 40 hours, that simply is just asking, you know, if we're doing 40 hours right here, that's asking what is the amount What's the population after 40 hours? So it's just a plug and chug right here. So we have 1,000 over 1 plus 9 times e to the negative 0 0.08 times 40. At some point, we're going to have to take a power of e, in which case then a calculator will be very useful here. This is just something you would throw in a calculator. You take negative 0.8 times it by 40, you get that, you raise e to that power, times it by 9 plus 1, and then divide all that by 1,000. So without going into details of how you actually plug something like this in your calculator, I'll assume my viewers can use their scientific calculators. This would give us approximately 731.6 thousand bacteria. Um, if we want to know how much bacteria there would be after 80 hours, well, then we take A of 80. So again, we're just going to plug in 80 into our formula right here. We end up with 1,000 divided by 1 plus 9e e to the negative 0 0.08 
times 80 this time. And so it'll look a little bit different, but like I said, this is just something we're going to throw into our calculator. When you put in the calculator and approximate this thing, you end up with 985.3 thousand bacteria. So it's after 80 hours, we've almost reached our carrying capacity. Now notice in the first 40 hours, um, our population went from 100,000 to 730,000 approximately. There was a huge explosion of growth, right? We had, we had about 600,000 uh, bacteria that were grown in the first 40 hours. But in the second 40 hours, we didn't have another 600 bacteria that grew. Um, we only had about 200, about 250,000 bacteria that grew in that second 40 hours. Why it's such a decline? And that's because of the growth model we see right here, right? That at the beginning, like, you know, the first half, there was like this large explosion, but in the second half, Although it continued to grow, we didn't have the same type of growth rate because we didn't have as much elbow room as we did the first 40 hours. Um, then the last question is when will it reach when will it reach uh, 900,000 or 0.9 million, right? So that's asking us in this situation we have to then solve we have to solve the equation 900,000 equals um, 1,000 over 1 plus 9 e to the negative 0 0.08 times t. We have to solve for t in this situation. Now this one takes a little bit more detail. So although we will throw our answer in the calculator at the end, let's go through the steps of this, what's going on. Notice where our variable is. Our variable is in the exponent of a denominator. So we have to kind of free our variable from its prison. The first thing to do is to clear the denominators. And as we just have 900 equal a fraction, you can think of it as 900 over one. And so you just cross multiply uh, to get this thing forward. So we're going to end up with 900 times 1 plus 9e to the negative 0.08t. That's equal to 1,000. And although it is tempting to just distribute the 900 through, you could do that if you want to. We could also just divide both sides by 900, right? Um, after all, because we, we have to solve for t, right? And, that's, and that's, the, that's the direction I'm going to go. The 900s cancel right there. And so we end up with 1 plus 9e to the negative 0. Uh, excuse me, negative 0 0.08t, that equals then, uh, well, 10 ninths, like so. We're going to subtract one from both sides, subtract one, and that's going to give us 9e to the point, our negative 0 0.08t, that equals now 1 ninth, uh, that is 10 ninths take away 9 ninths is 1 ninth. Uh, and so now we're going to divide both sides by 9, Notice we're dividing both sides by nine. Again, we're not timesing both sides by nine. So you might be tempted to think the right-hand side becomes a one. It actually becomes a uh, 181st. Just writing down the left-hand side now, one over 81 is where we're at right here. Then to get rid of the base E, we need to take the natural log of both sides. Take the natural log of both sides, and we end up with our rate, negative 0.08t is equal to well, the natural log of 1 over 81, there's a couple things you could do here. You could write this as the natural negative of the natural log of 81 because a reciprocal is a negative 1 power and a net powers inside the logarithms come out as coefficients. And also, since, since 81 is 3 to the 4th, you could also write this as negative 4 times the natural log of 3 if you want. Again, this is all just going to be in our calculator no, in just one more second anyways. So to finish off, we need to divide by the negative 8% we had before. like so. And so in the end, we end up with t would equal negative 4 times the natural log of 3 over a negative 0 0.08. And this is actually the reason why there's a negative sign in front of the k inside of the logistic formula. Going back up to the screen right here. Why was there a negative sign right here in the first place? And that's because we anticipate it's kind of actually correcting for the fact that there's going to be a negative later on. Uh, like we had right here. So you actually get a double negative. And this then gives us that so these are these right here will actually cancel out. Great. Um, and so we end up with our then our final result. Uh, now, if you did want to write this as a common fraction, I, I, you can move the decimal place over, you know, two places here and simplify if you wanted to. You'll end up with 50 times the natural log of three as the exact answer. Again, as we're just going to put this in a calculator, uh, let's let's approximate that and you get. Uh, 54.9, this would be in hours, right? Do notice that about 55 hours, so it should happen before 
should happen before 80 hours, but after 40 hours, as we saw right here, where it should hit 900,000. And so again, that happens around 55 hours after the initial growth of the bacteria.